Gavin Networth, always a pleasure. Very proud Wakefield man. Um, so we're going to do um, a few of the locations today. I mean, listen, Paul Sex at Large, it's had millions of views. Who's this guy from the city of Wakefield? You knew him very well. You're in the books. Um, the film is, I'm told, definitely happening next year for the summer. Um, I want you as some kind of technical advisor with Chris Campbell. I told them that. I told the people behind it. So the pub there, the Elephant and Castle, uh, what's the story with the Paul Sykes and any, any so who's any fields as well? I'm sure Ernie were a very good boxer, local lad. Yeah. Um, probably ended up the same really to be fair. I was going to say they were very similar stories weren't they? Yeah, I mean, that's where Ernie used to drink all the time in there. Yeah. Uh, last time I saw him, in fact, me and my friend Tim, um, we were sat just in that bay window there. Yeah. And we were that drunk, you couldn't even recognise anybody or anything. And there were a group of kids there, take it Mike live and Really? Oh, yeah. It That's sad, there. that, isn't it? It was sad because, like, you know, he'd mumble, he'd mumble, he couldn't even talk. And if them guys had known who they were talking yeah. to, messing around with, oh, man, they, they want to start yeah. praying. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's what Peter Fury said to me. He said, Sykes, he obviously, we're going to do a few, you're going to show me yeah. where I had the, the fire. He said, people in prison wouldn't even look at him sideways. And Johnny Nelson said, yeah. the people who tortured him, wouldn't have had any idea who he once upon a time was. No, no. I mean, strong man, but if you just look further down there to where the shop is, that's where Kenny's old shop is there. So that was that was the second one, because obviously I've just done there. Kenny's. Yeah, Which one? The, next to David Brown's there. Right, that, that was Kenny, the second one. Yeah, that's where yeah. he do all this stuff. But he now many times. Paul had come in here before he got banned out of town. And like, he squared up to anybody. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, one turn in, all were together, it could be either way, it could be a good time, or yeah. it could be end up in a night. Because they must have went back like years. They did. Do you know I what I mean? Two, kids. I mean, two fantastic local boxers. Yeah. Had it not been for the drink, yeah. and Sykes with the drugs as well. Oh man, there were two proper... See, a lot of people don't understand, like Sykes, was just, it was really bad with the drugs as well. He was. I mean, Speed, even said, smoked heroin. He did. As I said to you before, when he was at Malt Shovel mm. that night before he fought John L. Gardner. Yeah. A week before, it was big breakfast, Guinness or whatever he's drinking, few pills or whatever, and he'd walk around. That's just before they had that fight. Was it? And that's when Stuart Duffy squared him up and said, if you want to go now, yeah. let's do it. Another giant of a man. Mm. But just going back to the place here, many a night, they'd start off with the green there, have the drink, and then they'd wander up into town and get him where they could. Because at that point, they were feared. People used to talk to him, hello Paul, how are you doing Paul? It was a fear. Right, and then, but then eventually, he couldn't go nowhere. Because Disappeared. He, he just, well, yeah, he couldn't go nowhere. All he had was that name, but he was a shadow of himself. Well, yeah, because when you look back, you've seen a man, you know, a big giant of a man, and he was. Right? A big giant of a man. He'd walk around and just people would be fear. They feared him just his ear. People will drink up and go, buy him a drink, get him into it and go. Mm. That's how it was with him. But many a time in here, he'd come in either beginning at night, through the day, or end at night. We're going back in the day when there were really no daytime drinking, like 11 or 3. Then he'd swan off to say Ball Lane Club or whatever he could get a drink, he'd get one, fall asleep on a bench anywhere, he'd get up, wait for the pubs to open up again. Or he'd go to Ratcliffe Club, Ratto, which we'll see later on. Yeah. He'd go there and continue on as well. Right. It was a nightmare. Yeah. But, you know, get him on the right side. I've always said it and I'll say it again. Once he was sober, he could hold counsel with anyone. He was such an educated Do you know what? John, I spent a lot of time with John Spencer the last couple of years. And he, he had like Alex Higgins living, you know, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. hurricane. Yeah. So he had him living in his pub and him and Sykesy. Where they'd go out drinking, but another guy, big Mal, Malcolm Allison, football yeah, manager, yeah. he said he, he used to be annoyed, but like, John, where have you got him from? He's the funniest man I've ever met. Yeah. He'd be stood up on stage. Oh, he could hold his own court. Do you know what I mean? Hold, there's no two ways about it. He could hold his own court. No two ways about it. Catch him and then recite poetry to him. Yeah. He can talk politics, he can talk policies with you. But as soon as he has that drink, out, Jekyll and Hyde. And they were a nightmare. Yeah, and that, there's a very famous quote. Obviously, you said there's two quotes, and I've kept it. And maybe it might even be used in the film or whatever documentary. You said you, no one goes to Transylvania and not mention Jack Dracula, and you don't come to Wakefield and not mention 
Paul Sykes, but there's another, another quote as well, very poignant in my memory. Chris Campbell, lovely fella, yeah. and uh, he said, the one thing the Dorman of Wakefield never wanted to hear them words of Sykes is out in town. Oh, you yeah. were a Dorman, Gav, how bad was it? Bad. <laughs> you should. So, you go back when people knew on the, on the surface, it's better man, where we're stuck now, back in the 80s, all you'd see on a Saturday night is coaches, coach after coach after coach, people just getting off from Newcastle, from Liverpool, from everywhere that come here. Six o'clock in the night, especially six o'clock on a Saturday night after football, where we stood now at the train station, here, all the football fans used to get off from here and walk up famous Westgate. And, and that was the castle over the rooftop and that? Yeah, but they then said, there's a lot of, food, there's a lot of football crews out, we'd know, we'd get drafted in early and we'd have to deal with it. And you'd know that would be a good indicator, six o'clock, how many football fans were getting off there, to how busy it's going to be up there. Mm. That's another story you could write a book on as well. But here, that pub there, yeah, many times he's in there. He's had one or two ding-dongs in there. But, you know, that's where he used to go in, and then he'd just go wherever the music could let him go. Yeah. Right, Gav, we'll do more. Thanks yeah. for your time, mate. Cheers.